All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Monday, August 5th public meeting of the Board of Garrett County Commissioners. I want to welcome everybody in attendance with us today and everybody tuning in online. Uh, if everyone would please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> but before we do that, I do want to take just one second and have a moment of silence. Uh, Mike Menick, who is a friend of ours, uh, was the president of the Forestry Board, passed away uh, just a couple days ago. So in honor of Mike, if we could just take a, a couple of seconds. Thank you. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would bow with me for a word of prayer, please. Precious and loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you today thanking you for the day that you've given us. But Lord, we also ask on this day that you reach out to the Minnick family and give them comfort and, and just help them through this time. Lord, we ask that you be with us here today, that everything we say and do would be pleasing to you. And Lord, we do all this in thy precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Mr. Noll, any additions, corrections, or changes to the public mm -hmm. meeting agenda? No, sir, there are not. Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the meeting agenda? So moved. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. Motion and a second. The agenda is approved by mutual consent. Everybody got a copy of the minutes in advance of the meeting. Are there any changes or corrections, concerns to minutes? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. So moved. We have a second. Second. We have a second. <clears throat> minutes approved by mutual consent. <clears throat> All right, the first item we have on our agenda is uh, recognition for Bikes Corporation for their 50th anniversary, and right on cue, I mean, that was perfect timing. Uh, Connor, I'm going to turn it over to you. <clears throat> I was about to pipe up and say, uh-oh, we might have got something across here. I knew it was coming. Time. <laughs> well, thank you, folks. I mean, today we're celebrating another huge milestone in our community for a Garrett County homegrown business that has had influence not just locally in all the things that they support and all the jobs that they've created, but they've had a global impact with the work that they've done, not, across, not just across our nation, but across our world. So we're super happy to have Beitzel Corporation here with us today and celebrating their 50 year milestone. You know, I was grateful to work along with the great employees from this company. And I'm also uh, grateful that I had the opportunity to meet Olin many years ago when he would come in and volunteer his time to place music for the seniors at the senior centers to raise money for their, their efforts like Meals on Wheels and their programming. So I think this is a great company and I can't say enough good things about it. We have a fantastic proclamation that I'm going to turn over to Paul to read uh, on their behalf. All right, well, as I do that, Sean, if you want to come up, bring anybody else up that you want to bring with you. Where do you want me to be? Just come on up here with us, and uh, I'll go ahead and read this uh, <clears throat> commendation uh, for Bites on its 50th anniversary. Before I do that, i got to echo what, what Connor said. You know, what a, what a great example of a homegrown business uh, that started fairly modestly 50 years ago and grew into, if not our largest private employer in the county, certainly one of the, the top. And, you know, as I like to point out when we do these things, community means so much to us in Garrett County. You go to any little league field, either one of the high schools, the middle schools, fill in the blank with whatever uh, organization or, or nonprofits out there, and you'll probably see Beitzel, Pillar, uh, splattered in their advertising, supporting all the things that go on uh, throughout the whole county and, and really Western Maryland and beyond. So 
it, it's an honor to have Bitesville Corporation as a homegrown Garrett County business. They continue to grow. I think everyone in here knows they just bought uh, another building in the uh, Northern Garrett Industrial Park and continue to expand. And uh, very, very pleased and proud to have them and, and to work with Sean and the people at Bitesville and, and continue to see them thrive. So it was with great honor that uh, <clears throat> the Board of County Commissioners on August 5th, 2024, uh, are able to provide this commendation to Bites Corporation for their 50th anniversary. We, the Board of County Commissioners of Garrett County, Maryland, and our citizens are happy to join together to extend our sincerest congratulations to Bites Corporation on its 50th anniversary. Established in 1974 by founders Owen Bites and his father Lawrence, Bites Corporation became a pillar of innovation with their vision based on hard work and deep faith. Bites Corporation and their team of professionals have been an incredible asset to our region and continue to demonstrate a steadfast commitment to excellence. They've earned the reputation for reliability and quality performance both nationally and abroad, setting high industry standards in manufacturing, coal, oil and gas, solar, aggregates, and industrial markets. Congratulations to Bites Corporation not only on this milestone, but its enduring commitment to community enrichment for the past 50 years. May these years be an inspiration for a lasting legacy for generations to come. Signed by Commissioners Titchenell, Savage, and myself. And before I turn it over to Sean, any other comments from the other commissioners? I'd just like to say that everything you said is true and beyond that. They're, they're a business that uh, they have, I don't know how many, as you said, I don't know how many employees they have, but it's, they're well-paying jobs. And, um, you know, they're, they're far reaching. So it's an honor, again, for me to be included in this uh, proclamation to you all. And I told them, you know, thank you. Everything they said, and, uh, you know, congratulations on the 50 years, and we're, uh, we're definitely proud to have you and is, is loyal to our county as you are. And we appreciate that. Sure. Congratulations on this. Thank you. So, Sean, I'll hand this over to you and turn over the floor, whatever you want to say. Well, thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to receive this and uh, certainly wish that uh, Olin could be around to see this day. And, um, you know, he's, uh, he was retired from the company for quite some time, but certainly we couldn't be here without what he started. And uh, Olin always said the greatest asset that we as a company have is our people. And um, our people uh, come from the region, obviously. We have uh, over 600 employees. And it takes uh, it, it takes a lot of uh, a lot of employees and families to make everything happen. But we certainly love being part of Garrett County and are excited about the recent moves that we've made in the Northern Garrett Industrial Park and what that can mean for the next 50 years. And we think we're positioned well to continue to grow. And uh, it's an honor to be part of this. And, and thank you all for uh, for this. It's a real honor to be able to receive this on behalf of the companies. And before we take a photo, if I could invite our friends from the chamber up, and I'd like to give uh, Andrew Fight, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, a moment to uh, say a few words. <laughs> I'll say very few words. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> now, on behalf of all sincerely, the sincerely business community, I, I, it, it, Bites of Corporations far more reaching than I would probably have an idea. I know it's wide, and we appreciate uh, your commitment to our county and all. And like I said, the good paying jobs and just all the jobs. I got a couple of nephews who work down there, and obviously they, they love what they do and appreciate all that's done for us. But really, sincerely, for the business community and all of us, thank you very much, Sean. Appreciate it. This one, this one, this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Permission to leave the floor and <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, the next order of business. Maybe. Yeah, you have yeah. Really handy. Here, I got, it. I got it. We do have uh, two resolutions um, <clears throat> to approve. The first one is 
resolution number 2024-6, uh, sale of county property to the accident volunteer fire department, uh, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Garrett County, Maryland, a body politic and corporate political subdivision of the state of Maryland, authorizing the sale of real property known as all that piece or parcel of land situated lying and being in election district number five, Garrett County, Maryland, containing 92,723 square feet or 2.129 acres of land uh, as shown on State Highway Administration plat numbered 62197 to the Accident Volunteer Fire Department uh, and Maryland Corporation having a principal place of business in Garrett County, Maryland for the sum of one dollar and no cents. Um, this will be for uh, accidents uh, garage to be able to get out on 219 a lot quicker to uh, react to an emergency without having to come through town. So uh, we've acquired the property from State Highway and now we are turning it over to accident. Um, if you are so inclined, I will take a motion to accept resolution number 2024-6. So moved. A motion of second. second. Motion of second. Question of motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, the next resolution <clears throat> is uh, resolution 2024 7, which is to purchase property uh, at 176 Springs Road in Grantsville. Uh, this will be to work on a joint project with the town of Grantsville. Uh, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Garrett County uh, authorizing the county to purchase from the trustees of the Maranatha Assembly of God Church certain real property known as 176 Springs Road, Grantsville, Maryland, consisting of 5.26 acres more or less, situated in Lester, Election District Number 3, Garrett County, uh, being the same property which by deed dated July 21st, 1972 and recorded among the land records of Garrett County, Maryland in Lieber 327, Folio 023, um, was granted and conveyed by Simon Tice and Ruth Tice to trustees in the Maranatha Assembly of God for a purchase price of $412,500, authorizing uh, the county to pay the purchase price to Maranatha and directing the chairman of the Garrett County Commissioners to execute any and all documents that may be necessary to effect the purchase. Questions? If you're so inclined, take a motion to adopt resolution 2024-7. So moved. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next up, I'll get this in a second. Okay. Next up, uh, we have a very exciting uh, update on broadband projects in Garrett County. Um, Cheryl DeBerry from the IT department, uh, tell us what's happening. A lot of good stuff. up on the screen. Yeah, it's um, there's a lot of activity happening in the county, uh, different uh, companies doing work um, in basically all corners of the county. So we wanted to give an update and see if we could um, let folks know what's my all the way plugged in, what's going on and what's coming up. And it's coming. We we have it on our, there we go. Oh, there it is, okay. I just was a little bit delayed here. Um, yeah, so first of all, um, I just wanted to go through a real quick definition of what are we talking about whenever we're talking about broadband. And actually, it's a moving target. Um, broadband is at its core basically high-speed internet. So how fast is that? It makes it basically is um, a, a measure of how fast internet uh, information can come to your house and then how fast it can go back up to wherever you want to send it. That's called download and upload speeds. And those are measured in megabits per second and BPS. So basically, way back whenever I first started, we had four megabits per second download and one up. That was the definition of really fast broadband. Um, and back in 2015, it got upgraded to 25 by 3. 
And then this year, they finally increased it. This is through the uh, Federal Communications Commission. They increased it to 100 by 20. And then some of the funding sources, some of the grants, uh, require, they call it symmetrical service, 100 by 100. And in the future, who knows what the definition will be, but I'm sure it'll change again as, uh, as the way that we use internet changes. So we have several current projects happening, and I wanted to give you a real quick overview of what all those are. Um, the biggest project right now is Verizon, who got a, a state grant, basically, back uh, this year. And they are going to try to reach 2,000 addresses. And they know they are going to reach 2,000 addresses. They committed to it in the grant application. And so far, they have already built, and this started in about April, May, they've built 31 miles of fiber. They're going to be deploying their Fios pro product to um, those 2,000 addresses. And it goes kind of from, I'm not allowed to share maps, but um, it kind of goes from the bottom tip of the county up through, basically up, you know, through the center part of the county um, into, to, and they could only serve unserved addresses. Those are places that could not get that 100 by 20 uh, service. And anybody who's interested and wants to know when can I get service, if Verizon can get you service, they will let you know. Uh, you'll get some mailing, they'll put door hangers out, they will let you know. So, um, you know, be patient. They're not going to be able to start turning up customers until late this year, probably the first customers, and um, some of them maybe another year or two down the pike. It's a big project. The next one I wanted to mention is Comcast also got a state grant this year. It's for a smaller project to extend some of their fiber up in their, their fiber and cable up in the Finzel area. They're going to hit about 340 addresses up there. And it's just an extension of their network there. The next one is New Beam um, Declaration Networks Group has a couple different federal grants and loans that they're uh, using. They um, originally started with some fixed wireless uh, projects in the county, so those little antennas that you see standing around in people's yards and on the sides of silos and trees and everywhere trying to get service out in the middle of nowhere. Um, they are now doing most of their expansions with either fiber network or with a different kind of antenna technology that is much faster that will actually meet those definitions of broadband now, that the changed definition of broadband. With their current two projects, they're going to serve 376 unserved addresses. Those are places that don't have any option for broadband. And then um, a thousand that, you know, whenever you're headed to get to a rural area with a project, um, you pass a, a lot of other addresses on the way. And so with their loan, they're able to serve uh, a thousand basically other addresses that would be considered underserved. So they may have internet service, but it may not quite reach that definition of broadband. So it's a pretty extensive um, project, and it basically goes east of Oakland down along Route 135. And then piggybacking on that project, we, Garrett County, a couple years ago, um, Congressman Trone helped us get an earmark for a project um, in that same area, Route 135, down on the side roads. So we're going to extend their network, partner with them, to reach another 170 addresses further from Route 135. So their project could go this far on the road. Our project is going to help them go all the way down to the end of those roads. So it's going to be um, a game changer down there because cellular service is iffy down there too. So it's, it's going to be great to have uh, folks connected down there. Um, we have a couple different um, Appalachian Regional Commission projects going on. Um, and we also are working with the state through the Maryland uh, Office of Statewide Broadband through the Department of Housing and Community Development. There's a lot of acronyms in broadband. Um, most notably right now uh, that I'm trying to get money out there for is we still have Chromebooks available for uh, families that meet the income guidelines. It's one per household, but if anybody has not gotten their Chromebook, I have till the end of the year to get rid of the last 300 and some of them. So if you know anybody who may qualify, it's folks who are eligible for SNAP or Medicaid or, you know, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can, um, you can qualify. Those are available at every library branch. They can go in at any time and pick up those. They just need to bring their ID to show where they live 
and um, something that shows that they qualify for their services. And then uh, we have another two grants that we got that is a combination of the two funding sources listed there that is to, to help with um, the issue of, in, in rural areas, we have a lot of people who have a longer driveway or their house is further from where the line goes down along the road. And, um, you know, most uh, internet service providers will, you know, they have a calculation of, okay, we can reach a house that's, say, 200 feet from the road and still make money by not charging them extra to get them connected. But if it's 400 feet, the, it, it's a longer return on investment, so they um, will not go to that house unless the customer pays for that extra 200 feet. A lot of times it's more than that, and a lot of times it's a lot of money to get to these homes because if they have to dig um, along the, the, the driveway, you know, rocky soils, that's super expensive. So we have funding to help um, basically subsidize connections to these homes that are further from the, uh, from the road. And we have a lot of money right now, and all of our providers have been uh, participating in this program, and so uh, we're trying to get that money out the out the door and then so basically we have one more big project with Beitzel Corporate Pillar is helping us with uh, as our contractor it's another uh, grant that we got through the Economic Development Administration which is to get fiber optic cable from Oakland south along 219 east on Route 50 up to Table Rock Tower, and then down Table Rock a ways down to get to Matiki and Savage uh, Industries. Um, and that project is going to, that Table Rock Tower, um, is go it's gonna help with you know, communications for the state and the county because we're gonna suddenly have you know, good uh, service to that tower where now it's just jumping from another tower over through the air. Fiber is absolutely the fastest way to communicate. It's the fastest way to get uh, the speed of light. It's the fastest way to get uh, anything done. Um, and it's going to be available for providers to branch off of along the route and then use that tower if they have a fixed wireless solution they're trying to deploy. Um, and then that's mostly the big things that are happening. Um, we have uh, you know, right now, you may have seen in the newspaper or on our uh, Facebook page for the county, we're doing this map challenge where um, to get the new funding uh, through the broadband equity and access to, and deployment uh, funding that's coming down the pike, Maryland has to submit a plan and that has to be approved. And part of that process is making sure that the map that shows who has service and who doesn't is accurate so that who doesn't is eligible for funding to get to their house um, and the ones that are already served we're not allowed to spend money to get to them so we want to make sure that we have as many people in the unserved you know uh, pot as we can because we have a lot of unserved folks still in the county um, and that process is going on right now and it, if you need information about that up on our uh, website we can I have that at the end of the presentation and you can see more about that we have lots of more long driveway projects coming down the pike. Um, when, the fun, when the Maryland plan for BEAD gets approved, that money will flow through the state to us and the internet service providers, so we'll have a lot of money to do more stuff here. And then our next layer, so broadband you know, is, is important for a lot of reasons. Number one, you have to have it at your house to be able to use it. You have to be able to you know, afford the service to be able to get on the internet. Um, you have to have a device to be able to you know, get on the internet. You have to know how to use the device. You know, have, to have to know how to be safe online. And all of those things above that first level of getting the service to your house, those are things that we call digital opportunity planning. And we want to like teach seniors how they can look up their Medicare and Medicaid benefits online. We, you know, help people talk to doctors online. We want to make sure that students can get online to look at their, um, their assignments. We want to make sure that, you know, people can apply for jobs online. And all of those things are the things that we're going to have to tackle next once we get internet to everyone. And there's funding coming down the pike for that too. So
so we're excited about it. And everybody always asks me, well, okay, when am I going to get service? This Verizon project and you know all these other things that are happening, when are we going to get service? And when are we going to be able to do this stuff? When can we apply for the bead funding? And honestly, the three question marks are there because it's anybody's guess. We get, we get funded and maybe two years later we're able to start the project because of all the environmental uh, things that we have to go through, the reporting and compliance, getting ready to get on the, um, the federal grants. So it's, it's a laborious and slow process to get this federal funding to do these projects. And it takes a lot of tenacity to keep working at them. So um, yes, these projects are going to happen. Yes, things are going to be coming down the pike, but we don't know when you're going to get your service right at your house until we're ready to connect you <laughs> that week. So um, we can try to figure it out, but it's really difficult to estimate. And I said I was going to share the broadband website. We have GarrettCountyMD.gov slash broadband or you can just go to GarrettCountyMD.gov and search broadband up at the top. Um, there's a phone number and an email address for me, and I am happy to take questions from you gentlemen. Well, I don't have any questions, but I would like to say um, <clears throat> great job, uh, obviously, by the, the presentation. We're going to have thousands of residents that are going to have access to the Internet that did not previously or at least able to upgrade. Uh, you know, we, we mention all the time especially Larry and I, when we first started years ago, this was the big issue. Uh, and, and not that it's not an issue anymore, but the work that you guys have done uh, have bridged that gap really well. You've done a, an excellent job, and it's not the issue it used to be because we have the best IT department in the state by far and maybe the nation. And I say it all the time, our IT department in broadband expansion is held up as the model across the state and the country of how you do it and this is this is why so a pat on the back to you uh and nathaniel and everyone else over there because you guys are doing an excellent work i mean this is this is fantastic any questions so um, we'll put you on the spot sure Troy. so an estimate of how much money has been invested in these projects so, I mean, if you go all the way back to like 2011 when we got our first um, money to do a study to see like, who was served and who's unserved and what potential solutions would be um, available for us, you know, we're talking probably in the tens of millions of dollars total. Um, I mean, right now, the active projects that I am doing grant reports for, we have about six and a half million dollars. Um, and that's not including the ones that we're working with, like the Verizon project. That's their project that we're supporting. That do, I'm not including that in there. So um, it's it's sig significant. It's a significant problem. It's ex it's very expensive, um, especially here in the mountains to extend broadband. And um, yeah, it's it's big. It's a lot. Yeah. And can you speak to some of the innovative things that we've done? The boring machine and, and some of those type of projects that are unique. Yeah, so we, Garrett County, I guess we're, I, I tell people I'm dumb enough to not know what I'm not allowed to do, so we have tried to tackle this project, this, this problem from every angle that we can think of. So in, initially there were no, um, you know, no fiber providers in the county, so the initial Funding, you know, the initial funding that we talked about in ARC that did this study told us, well, why don't we try doing the fixed wireless project? And nobody else had done that from a county's perspective, so we jumped in and we found some funding to do that. And that brought adequate service to people at the broadband definition of the time, um, but of course now it's too slow. It's not you know, adequate for what we use the internet for. So now those systems are gonna be replaced with fiber. Um, we have done the long driveway thing. We did it way before um, a lot of other people were thinking about it as a test run, and they used us to model some of the other counties in the state. Um, we found that in some cases, projects were not getting done because things had to be buried underground, and it was too expensive to hire a private contractor to do it. It just, the project would not cash flow. And because of the actual cost of that, 
you know, subsidies wouldn't work either because we didn't have enough funding to do, you know, to pay to do that. So we have people on county um, payroll that know how to dig ditches, they know how to dig trenches, they know how to install conduits. And so we thought, well, why don't we find some uh, funding to purchase some equipment that can be used for the Department of Public Utilities or the Roads Department for other projects, but because broadband funding is available, let's get that, that, that equipment because of the broadband projects that we need to do. And so when a project's not gonna get done unless they have some direct assistance, then we will go in with our uh, crews when they're available because they're pretty busy the same time that the broadband projects are doing. So we've done, um, we've purchased a directional bore machine which digs underneath roads and helps do road crossings and other places where we need to get uh, service to. We've uh, purchased a, a um, a skid steer with a cutting wheel on it so that we can cut you know in the road or the beside the road we're in the running for an earmark to purchase a uh, a vac truck it's a vacuum excavator truck which will help with um it, when you're using the directional bore machine you have to dig at the beginning and the end to see where you're going to be and that's all hand digging right now and if we have this truck we'll be able to do that but it'll also help whenever we have to cross other infrastructure you know if Verizon or Comcast lines or electric lines are going along, we have to open that trench up to see where those are so we don't hit it. And that can be done with this machine that will use water, high speed, heavy uh, pressure water to you know, make a slurry and then suck it up and then suddenly the stuff's right there and it's um, pretty handy. Uh, we're really trying hard not to use this solution as a way to, um, to compete with our private industry because private industry does great. And when our providers can use private uh, contractors to do this kind of work, we encourage them to do that. But when it just doesn't work for a project, we're using that. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK. Um, <clears throat> before we go into public comment, um, just a couple of announcements, and then we'll take questions. And then at the conclusion of that, we'll close the public meeting and uh, open a public hearing on three different ordinances. Uh, that'll come at the conclusion of this meeting. Uh, the only comment that I have is our next scheduled public meeting will be Tuesday, August 20th at the Appleton Community Center beginning at six o'clock. That will be our last meeting off-site uh, as we do through the summer. So the, the next meeting will be in Appleton um, and then we'll be back here for the rest of the year. So with that, before we close the meeting and go to uh, the public hearing, are there any other questions or comments from anybody in the audience on anything that we've talked about so far or, or in general? Yes, ma'am. I just have one that I'm happy to be here to hear the, the broadband, but being in the, on the real estate end and knowing the maps.garrettcounty.org site, and on that, there are layers that show where the water line, you know, areas that are served by public water or areas that are served by sewer. Is there an effort to get this marked as areas that are served by broadband and by which company? Because that sometimes is the difference between whether a buyer is interested in a property, whether it is served by broadband. Yeah, you know, we thought about that, but um, I guess I can answer. Yeah. <laughs> but, Please do. Um, the, the issue is those long driveways. So you can say this blob on the map is served by Comcast, but if your house is more than 200 feet from the road, you're not served unless you can pay to get to that house. So, um, and the, it, it's really difficult to pick an address and know exactly who's there. The, the best effort we have is the FCC map. Right well, yeah, I mean, you've been very helpful, but I hate to bother you when uh, I do. Well, I do. <laughs> There, there could be, I mean, I, I would encourage you guys to take a look at, at that because I can see where that would be the determining factor of whether someone buys residential or commercial property or anything. So if there's a way to blend those, I think that would be good. But, thinking about it. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, hearing none, can I have a motion to adjourn the public meeting and open the public hearing? So moved. All right, public meeting is now adjourned, so we will go into a public hearing. 
Uh, this public hearing is on revisions and adoptions and following ordinances. Uh, the building code ordinance, uh, mechanical code ordinance, and the community uh, reinvestment and repair fund ordinance. Uh, the rec the, any comments from this can be made during this hearing. Uh, you can also uh, comment uh, via email up until August 20th uh, when uh, yeah, the 20th at our next meeting when we will vote to adopt or not adopt these particular ordinances. So if you have, uh, and, and you can uh, read these ordinances online, correct? Yes, Kevin. Correct. So if you uh, want to see the specific language, you can do that or reach out to, to Chad and get a copy of it to, to read that. So with that, Chad, I'll turn it over to you. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, so we'll go through building first. We're looking to adopt the 2021 International Building Code, International Residential Code, and Energy Conservation Code. Uh, these are going to repeal and replace the current 2015 codes that we're under right now. Typically, these are done on a three-year cycle. 2018 happened right during COVID, so we skipped that cycle. Um, in terms of procedures, the state enacts the building code first and then directs the local jurisdictions to adopt and implement those. Um, Jurisdictions can amend them somewhat, but we are restricted. We can't amend anything uh, or to lessen those requirements for energy conservation or sprinkler requirements. Um, the majority of the amendments, we have submitted those. The majority of those are administrative issues with how we set up our permit office. Uh, many of the things are also continuing certain code things that we change every year. There are some changes in the 2021 code, and I've highlighted a few of these. Uh, one of them concerns design professionals. So in previous years, we had exempted single family homes from a requirement to be prepared by licensed architect or structural engineer. We're not gonna do that this time, uh, but we have had an, added an exception allowing this requirement to be waived if the submitted documents have enough detail that they meet all the requirements. So we have a little bit of flexibility with additions, things like that, if they have enough information on the building um, itself. Uh, the new 2021 code has some more lenient requirements for emergency escape and rescue openings. These are typically egress windows. Uh, this was in certain situations for basements and replacement windows. We felt uncomfortable with that, so we deleted that part and we're going to use basically it's going to be the same that's in the 2015 code. Um, we used to amend the ordinance to make uh, more lenient requirements for stair treads and risers, but we're now going to just go with what's in the code which is a seven and three quarter inch rise and 10 inch depth. Um, there's a new appendix in the code dealing with tiny homes. So this would be for houses that are less than 400 square feet. And this allows some uh, relaxed requirements for ceiling height, loft stairways. Um, the state has also adopted a 2021 international swimming pool and spa code. This is now state law that we have to adopt that. So that's referenced in the code. So I don't know if anybody has any questions about the building part of it. <clears throat> so let, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you uh, are taking these one by one. Uh, any questions by the commissioners on building code ordinance changes? Any questions from the audience on that particular ordinance or changes? I just want a copy of that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So regarding the taking out the design professional. So that means that you need a, a registered architect or structural engineer, but then you have an ability to waive that as long as it meets certain criteria. So what's the criteria? It's in the code. It talks about, you know, you have all the structural elements listed, insulation values, framing members. So if you can meet all those and provide that for us, then we can waive it. We're getting literally stuff written on backs of menus oh, and everything else. All the time. Yeah, so, and it, <laughs> it makes it really hard to figure out what's going on. But for, for instance, I, I'll just call it out. Sometimes there's two design professionals sitting here and they will on 